So I do have a problem with killing cats and I'm gonna explain it in today's video but I also want to show you my killing cat and I hope that what I'm gonna share with you in this video doesn't offend anybody it's my point of view and I think that it might help somebody out there that is thinking that they don't need these things or it might help somebody out there who does have these things in their killing kit yet um, they're not sure let me explain I've seen many kidding kids videos online and then some other videos and when the time comes it's very hard for people to understand that this is the time that you use this tool or this is the time that you use this other tool and I'm talking about emergency cases like okay there's a baby that is stuck so you have to use a lamp puller um, but do you know that it's stuck how do you know if it's stuck and uh, all I want to say is I watch way too many videos of people that had everything in their kit and kit and something went wrong so having a kit and kit I think that's my disclaimer having a kit and kit doesn't mean that you know everything will go right or that you will be able to solve every single problem but at the same time for me living in the middle of nowhere it gives me the peace of mind that if i realize that there's a baby stuck and i need to use a lamp puller i will use it with the instructions of a book i know not the greatest idea ever but if i have an idea um a general idea i should say about how to use it i will use it to save my dog's life so i understand that things will go wrong but having a kid and kid it's not um, it's not a guarantee that nothing will go wrong it's actually a peace of mind that if something goes wrong and you realize that something is wrong you have the tools to um, work with that situation but if you don't have the tools and something really bad happens then you're gonna probably blame yourself for not having everything that you need to help your doe or help that kid so having said that do I think that everyone should have a kitten kit yeah I do I think everyone should even if you live next door to the feed store because that uh, you know labor can happen in the middle of the night and you know I think that it's always better to be prepared knowing when to use those tools it's gonna be totally up to you so I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm gonna show you my kitten kit but I think that if you are researching this because you have goats and they're gonna have babies soon or in a few months or if you're planning to breed them I just want to say that please just look up the hard stuff you know if things go wrong I have a few recommendations of books one is by Deborah Neiman it's called Goats Giving Birth and it shows you with pictures what you have to see like when they're in actual labor you know I thought it was one bubble but over there in the book it showed three bubbles and I would totally freak out if I saw three bubbles but they're all part of the same placenta and I don't know for whatever reason I thought that it was only one bubble so yes have a kidding kit ready but please please do your research on when things don't go right or how can you know that something is not right now in most cases um, things will go okay because you know goats have been given birth for ever and so it's you know it's kind of silly to think that they need your help but in the case that they do need your help I want to make sure that I can help them and I can know the signs of oh my goodness this is what's happening you know now is the time to use the lamp puller now is the time to use the, the the gloves and sanitize and the OB lube and go in and check this is the time but what if you don't know when that time is then all of those tools will be useless now this is my birthing kit I keep it inside one of these plastic containers I don't have the room in the barn to leave it there and I think the goats are gonna be on top of it and they're gonna be pooping on it or the lid anyways so anyways um, this is what I've I think it's important to have at least for me and of course please 
if you want to share something that I should have here and I don't, let me know in the comments below. The first thing is towels. I have a couple of small towels and then a couple of bigger towels if I need them. I also have um, this that is mostly for water in case I need it. I made a mistake and I bought this OB Lube that is a powder thing. So I have to mix it with water in order to make it into that jelly that it's going to help you go in if I had to go in and help rearrange a kid. So this is basically for the water and the OB lube. Now I brought a clean towel just in case and this little plastic container because you always need one, at least I always do. I have sanitizer in the barn but I brought alcohol just in case that I need something in a pinch. I just put something in my hand. I have the iodine solution. I have here what I would need to cut if it was needed, the umbilical cord, which is some scissors and dental floss, and dental floss to kind of tie it and make sure that it doesn't bleed. This is for the baby as soon as it's born. I also have this for the baby to clear the nasal area so they can breathe. Excuse you, Annabelle. I know this is so very exciting. I know. And I have gloves. They're not sterile, so that's why I have the alcohol. I can just dump a bunch of alcohol and make them sterile. I just don't mind about that. I also have a lamp holder that I need to sanitize. I just stick it in here because I thought, well, uh, worst case scenario, I'll put some alcohol and disinfect it that way. But now that I've realized that I still have time, I would just boil some water. That's what it says that you should do to clean it and sterilize it. I have a soda bottle, a couple of bottle, what are they called, nipples. And this is for after birth, so I kind of keep it in this bag, I mean box. I have selenium. Annabelle, can you please? Can you please, mama? Let me move it up here. She's very, very curious. I mean, look at them. Like, are, is this for my baby? Well, hopefully I don't have to use anything with your babies, okay? Let's count on that. So I have Jumpstart if they need it. I actually gave a little bit of Jumpstart to little, oh no, no. Bios. That's what I gave to Rocky because he was struggling with his rumen. So this is for the rumen. It could be for the babies or it could be for the mom. This jump start is if you have a weak kid, maybe in the legs or, you know, it's a little off, you can give them that. I have selenium and vitamin E gel. I got this smaller one because I already have this big one, but I don't know, for babies. This I hope I never had to use, but this is a feeding kit, just in case if I have a dying kid, kid I am not um, going to doubt my knowledge on how to tube a goat. I'm just going to follow the instructions on the book and hope for the best because if they don't eat, they die anyways. And I got this kid colostrum supplement. So in this box, I'm kind of keeping everything that I would need. I hopefully, I hopefully not, but everything that I need for afterbirth or could need for afterbirth, and that goes right here. So that is pretty much it. I also have a feed bag, so if I have to put the babies. Uh, on the side for a little bit instead of just leaving them on the hay I'll put it on top of this and one of the towels so they don't get all full of <laughs> You're so curious, honey. I love you mama So that's pretty much it. That's all I have in my kitty kit. Oh, never mind. I also have this For weighing the kits Yeah, I can't I can't check your weight there though. So the idea is that I can use this for the water <coughs> and then I can put the kids here and kind of weigh and see how much they weigh when they're born. 
I plan to take pictures and just record their weight and everything so I can keep an eye on them and make sure that they're gaining weight every day. I was listening to this podcast about they're like the pregnant ladies are like oh is this my delivery thing look at this look at you baby hi baby hi love hi hi mama so anyways I'm gonna keep it there it's in the milk stand right now but as soon as the girls are in labor, I am going to move it inside the barn. I just wanted it to have it here. And this is mostly for setting up the camera or sitting on. It's a <laughs> two-step kind of thing. <clears throat> but my tripod broke, so it, I probably can set, a, set it on top of here and, you know, can still film. Hopefully. So anyways, that is pretty much all I have there. Kind of have a little messy area right here, but it's gonna have to wait. It's gonna have to wait for itchy pregnant mama. I love you mom. Look at that, still nursing. That's why he's so big and so healthy now. Even though that's not his So mom. I guess I'm gonna let you go today. Um, what is it, day 144? I'm gonna let you go and, and continue in my nesting mode. Although that, I don't know if that's a term that you guys use here, but that's how we call it. I remember when I was pregnant with my kids, I have the urge of cleaning the entire house and reorganizing, and that's pretty much all I'm doing. The minute that I feel a little bit better, I go do dishes and then I go through a drawer and organize that drawer, or I decide to vacuum inside some furniture, or, you know, the minute I feel a little bit better and I'm not here with the girls, I am doing that.